Hello students. So shall we start the class? Right. Okay. Anything to ask? Doubts? Question? Anything? Well, that's a question for which I never have got any answer. So for me, the answer is the same whether the class is really live or on video. Right. Anyway, so let us start the class. Enjoy the yeah. Yeah, he is here. He is here today. Good. So uh, now um, you can recall that yesterday we started a discussion on um, confounding. The basic idea of uh, confounding was that first we have to choose a factor or an interaction or a main effect which we want to confound. And then accordingly, we have to allocate different treatments to the blocks. And uh, what is going to uh, going to be the advantage? The advantage is that that if you try to confound one effect, either main effect or interaction effect, then the block size will become half. So obviously, once the block size become the half the number of plots required become half the exper the experimental material becomes half that means you have to use only half of the experimental material in comparison to the full factorial experiment and then finally it uh, gives you a better efficiency more administrative convenience and so on so now uh, we will continue our discussion. Yesterday I had given you the fundamental background about the confounded effect that how those effects are confounded, what are their statistical justifications and, and how are you going to find out that which of the treatment will go to the blocks so now i will try to continue today on the same lines i will try to first discuss some basic fundamentals definitions and then i will try to show you that in case if you have higher order effects higher order interaction effects or say or in case if you are trying to conduct a higher order factorial experiment then how are you going to handle the issue of confounding so let us start our discussion from these slides okay right so first uh, let me give you a brief recall that if you try to consider here a 2q factorial experiment so there are here three factors which are here A, B, C and you have eight treatment combinations. Right. And suppose you would take a call that you want to confound the interaction effect ABC. So AB is to be confounded. So I will try to now show you me mechanically and briefly how can you obtain the block arrangement. So obviously in case if you go for full factorial then you need 2q is equal to 8 plots per block. And now once you are trying to confound the ABC then you will need a block of size is equal to 4 plots right so now the question is this you have got here a treatment combination 1 a b c a b b c a c and a b c now how to choose uh, how to choose the four treatment combinations which are to be allocated to any block right so for that what you have to do you simply have to write your 
ABC that we had discussed in the earlier lectures something A minus 1, B minus 1, A minus 1 and if you try to expand it this will come out to be A plus B plus C plus ABC minus 1 minus AB minus BC and minus AC so now what you have to do that you have to identify that what are the treatment combination which have got the same sign so you can see here that these are the four treatment combination A, B, C and A, B, C which have got the same sign and similarly there are four more treatment combination 1, A, B, B, C and A, C which have got negative sign so I can write them here like this now this will become here positive and now what I have to do that I simply have to put all the treatment combination with plus sign in one block and all the treatment combinations with negative sign in another block so now this will be your here block 1 and this will be your here block 2 and so I can write here my two blocks like A, B, C, A, B, C, 1, A, B, B, C and A, C. So this is how <coughs> uh, you will get this confounding arrangement. Right. So now this uh, gives you here, uh, uh, give rise to the need of some basic definition. So whatever you have done here this is called as confounding arrangement that means in case if you are trying to find that out of 8 treatment combination which are the 4 treatment combination which will go to block 1 here and what are those four uh, treatment combination which will go to block two then these are the treatment combination and this arrangement the arrangement by which you are going to assign different treatments to different block this is called as confounding arrangement right so this is essentially the arrangement of different treatment combinations in different blocks and another thing here you have taken a decision that you are going to confound ABC so this is called as defining contrast right so uh, now you have here two, uh, two definition one is confounding arrangement and say another is defining contrast right so uh, I, I have already prepared some uh, sheets which I will try to use here and I will try to give you uh, these things uh, briefly. So now uh, uh, you can see here that here I have written very clearly that what is a defining contrast or even before that I can show you that uh, this was the sheet which I will upload it as a notes so you can see here that I have written here ABC uh, like this and then yeah I mean this is my block 1 this is my block 2 so this arrangement is called as uh, confounding arrangement right and then after this and the, the defining contrast that is the interaction which are confounded are called the defining contrast of the confounding arrangement now the question is this when you are trying to choose the interaction effect or main effect or any other effect which has to be confounded then what exactly you have to keep in your mind so there are certain requirements for the confounding arrangement first requirement is that only predetermined interactions are confounded or I will say only predetermined effects are confounded right 
that means this should only be you who has to take a call that which of the effects are to be confounded but in this process what will happen that when you are trying to confound uh, uh, some predetermined effects then some other effects will also get automatically confounded right and this is the uh, uh, called as generalized interactions are also getting confounded but uh, we will talk about them uh, after a couple of minutes so the second condition is this the estimate of the interaction which are not confounded are orthogonal whenever interactions are orthogonal so what is an orthogonal treatment combination and what is the concept of orthogonality that i'm just going to talk about in a couple of minutes and then you will understand it and uh, and once you have uh, confounded some predetermined uh, effects then there will be two types of effects those effects which are uh, confounded and those effects which are not confounded and finally your basic objective is to find out the analysis of variance so for that you need to find out the sum of squares right so you have to keep in mind that you have to conduct all this analysis in such a way such that the sum of squares of unconfounded uh, effects are still mutually orthogonal that we know that whenever you are trying to partition the total sum of squares into different uh, type of sum of squares sum of squares due to a sum of squares due to b sum of squares due to c and so on all these sum of squares are mutually orthogonal now when you are trying to confound uh, confound some some of the effect so all those effects which are not confounded their corresponding sum of squares have to be remain orthogonal or mutually orthogonal to each other right okay so now let me uh, continue our discussion and first uh, let me try to give you some basic definitions right so one basic uh, definition what you can see here is this this is the generalized interaction so what is called a generalized interaction but before that what you have to keep in mind that we have here two types of uh, alphabets one are your uh, capital letter alphabets and another are small letter alphabets and and uh, we try to denote the effects that is the main effect or interaction effects uh, uh, by the capital letters and we try to denote the treatment combinations by uh, by small letters so uh, whenever we are interested in uh, confounding more than one effects then when we try to multiply those effects and we will try to treat them just like an algebraical multiplication so in order to find out the generalized interaction what we have to do we have to first multiply those effects with the main or interaction and we have to ignore the term with even exponent what does this mean for example if i try to explain you here that if i try to uh, take here two effects say a b c and b c d suppose they are my defining contrast they are my defining contrast so now what will happen that when i try to multiply a b c into b c d remember these are two uh, two effects and uh, yeah and those mathematical rules are not really applicable but just for the sake of understanding uh, i am trying to treat them as a mathematical uh, say this multiplication and we'll, we'll get around, I will try to show you that why I am doing it and how these concepts are related to the statistical theory so now this will become here a b square c square and here d 
So now what I have to do? I have to, this is this graph here. I have to take all the effects with even exponent that is uh, the, the power of the effect is even number 2, 4, 6 and so on. They have to be taken as here 1. So now if I try to write down here this becomes here a into 1 which is b square and then c square which is here 1 and this is here d. So this becomes here a d. And similarly if I try to take here another component here a b c into say here b c d into here um, say a b then you can see here what is happening this a and this a this is here a square 1 b 2 b 3 b so this will become here b cube and then this becomes here c c this is c square and yeah let me uh, take here one more factor here e so now this will become here into e so now what will become here so now this a square will become here 1 this b cube can be written as b square into b and this c square becomes here 1 and this is here e so now this becomes here b into e so so this is b e is your uh, generalized interaction similarly if you try to take another example a b into a c into a b e so this will become here a cube b square c e and this will become here a c right so this will become here a square into a which is here a b square becomes 1 c e e so for example in this case uh, this in this case here a d in this case here b e and this case here a c e these are your generalized interaction right similarly there is another definition which is interaction effect so this is independent interaction so the definition says that a set of main effects and interaction contrast is called independent if no member of the set can be obtained as a generalized interaction of the other members of the set this means what Suppose if I try to take here this uh, three effects in my set A, B, B, C and A, D. Now in case if you multiply here A, B into B, C what you will get A, B square C which is A, C. Does A, C appear here? The answer is no. Now in case if I try to take A, B into A, D this becomes a square BD which is BD does BD appears here no now I try to take third combination BC into AD BC into AD is ABCD does ABCD appears here no now that last combination will be AB into BC into AD so now this become A square B square CD. So does CD appears here in this set? The answer is no. So that means this set does not contain any other interaction or main effect which can be obtained by the multiplication and it is already there in the set. So that is why this is called as independent set. On the other hand if I try to take another example here a B into B C sorry A B B C C D and A D. So now you can see here when I try to multiply here A B into B C this is A into C which is not here no issues. And if I try to take here A B into C D this is A B C D this is not here. Similarly if I try to take A B into A D this is B D this is not here. Then I try to take B C into C D which is here B D which is not here. Now I try to take here BC into AD which is ABCD which is not here. Now I try to take CD into AD. CD into AD means this is 
AC. AC is not here. So up to now, this set appears to be an independent set. But as soon as I take here AB into BC into CD, this becomes here AB square C square D, which is AD. And AD is already there in the set. So that means this set of uh, of effect A, B, B, C, C, and A, D, it is not an independent set. So this is the basic idea of the uh, of the independent interaction. So all the elements in the set of A, B, B, C, and A, D, they uh, they create an independent interaction uh, set, whereas A, B, B, C, C, D, and A, D, they don't uh, create a uh, they don't construct an the set of independent interaction right okay now i come to how i come to another concept which is the, here the orthogonality of treatment combinations and a contrast so first let me have the uh, definition and then I will try to try, uh, try to explain you. If I try to uh, take here any treatment combination, what is the treatment, uh, treatment co combination? This is usually the set of, uh, 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 set of elements in the terms of, of small letters, small alphabets, small a, small b, small c. Right. So, in case if I try to consider any treatment combination, say A raised to the power of P, B raised to the power of Q, C raised to the power of R, and so on, then this treatment combination, and can I try to take a, take another combination of the interaction? Interactions are uh, are uh, denoted by capital letters, capital A, capital B, capital C. So I try to take the the interaction as a A raised to the power of X, B raised to the power of Y, C raised to the power of Z. Then I have to uh, see what will be the condition under which this treatment combination and this interaction effect they are going to be orthogonal. So the rule is very well uh, is extremely simple. The treatment combination this one a raised power of b uh, raised power of q c raised power of a r is said to be orthogonal to the interaction a raised power of a r x b raised power of a r y and c raised to the power of z. If this p x plus q y plus r z dot 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 is divisible by 2 that means this power p into x that means the corresponding power of a are multiplied corresponding power of b are multiplied corresponding power of c are multiplied and then they are added together so p into x plus q into y plus c into z etc that is going to be an even number that has to be divisible by 2 right now if we already have seen that uh, whenever the power is 2 that becomes here 0 so that means in case if any uh, of the the product of this uh, 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 sum of the product other px plus qy plus rz is divisible by 2 then what really happens because since p q r x y z they are either 0 or 1 so what we have to simply see that we simply have to check that how many elements are common and whether this number of animals which are common are they even number or odd number. So we simply have to check for even number of letters which are common between P, Q, R and X, Y, Z etc. As a rule the treatment combination one is orthogonal to every interaction that's a rule now the third property is that if there are two treatment combinations which are orthogonal to a given interaction effect then what happens to the orthogonality of those treatment combinations so i can say here that if i have a treatment combination a this power of p b this power of q c this power of here r and so on and say another is a, a is again another treatment combination a b c with powers p prime q prime r prime etc then suppose that both this treatment combination they are orthogonal to the 
interaction effect a raised power of air x b raised power of air y and c raised to the power of z and so on then this treatment combination and this treatment combination that means the both treatment combination will also be orthogonal to the interaction effect so what will happen that if these two are orthogonal we can i can write their multiplication as a raised to the power of p plus p prime b raised to the power of q plus q prime c raised to the power of r r plus r prime and so on then this uh number is then this treatment combination is orthogonal to to interaction effect a raised to the power of air b raised to the power of air y c raised to the power of air z right so and you will see that all this property we are going to use when we are trying to find out the 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 uh, the confounding arrangement when we have more than two uh, treatment uh, sorry two effects being confounded together and similarly if two interactions are orthogonal to a treatment combination their generalized interaction is also also orthogonal to it so whatever we have done here that is true for generalized interaction also okay so now let me go to the next slide and there are some more rules here which are pretty simple and if i try to write down before you possibly that will take a very long time so that is why i all uh, so i have already written it so now third rule is this if any two interaction are confounded then their generalized interaction is also confounded so that means if you say that if there are two interaction effect which are confounded then obviously their generalized interaction will also be confounded confounded so this is a very important point where you have to keep in mind that uh, suppose you try to decide that there uh, that there are only two effects which are going to be confounded and you assume that your block size will become 1 by 4th but then what will happen that there will be some other interaction effect which are obtained as the generalized interaction they will automatically be getting confounded so that means you wanted the block size to be 1 by 4 but the block size will be further reduced so that is what we have to keep in mind while constructing the blocks after getting the confounded effects now in case if you take a call that you want to confound p effects say small p number of effects then out of p uh 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 wait i will i will uh, repeat it i will try to say this statement a statement again yeah so when we are trying to confound the the uh, the effects then p out of 2 to the power of p minus 1 defining contrast they are independent and rest are obtained as generalized interaction this means here what that this rule is trying to give you a rule by which you can count that how many interaction effect or main effect are going to be in the set of independent interactions and generalized interactions right so this means the total number of effect which are getting confounded automatically this will become 2 to the power of here p minus p minus 1 right so that means we have to confound only p minus 1 effects right let me try to explain all this concept through a simple example suppose i try to consider a factorial experiment of order 2 to the power of here 5 so that means here in this case symbolically this is 2 to the power of here 5 though that means n equal to here 5 so there are going to be five factors and they and they are going to be denoted by capital letters a b c d e and now they have to be confounded in 2 to the power of here 3 uh, block sizes that means i would say the same thing in a different way suppose i want to confound here three effects right so here p is equal to here three 
so that means now how many blocks I need here I need here 2 raised to the power of here P blocks which, which is equal to a 2 to the power of Q which is here 8 number of blocks and what will be the size of the block that will be 2 raised to the power of here and minus P which is here 2 raised to the power of here 5 minus 3 which is equal to 2 square which is equal to here 4 right so now under this case the total number of defining contrast will be 2 to the power of here P minus 1 which is here you can see here right so this is 2 to the power of Q minus 1 which is equal to here 7 so there will be 7 defining contrast in case if you want to have 8 blocks right and the total number of independent contrast out of this uh, 7 contrast will be only 3 so this 7 number of defining contrast will be divided into 2 parts 1 uh, the set of independent interaction and the remaining interaction which are obtained as a generalized interaction so out of the 7 3 are going to be independent contrast and say remaining 4 they will be obtained as a generalized interaction right for example suppose if I stay here suppose if I choose let's say here three independent contrasts as say ACE, ABDE and CTE so there are three independent contrasts that is P is equal to 3 now 7 minus 3 that is 4 4 remaining contrast which are the generalized interaction they will be obtained from these three independent contrasts by multiplying them so the first second third are the independent contrast now the fourth is going to be obtained by multiplying first and second and after that first and third and then second and third and then after that first second and third so so by so multiplying first and second we get ACE into here ABDE which is here A square BCDE square BCD so BCD is another generalized interaction which will automatically be confounded similarly if you try to multiply ACE into CDE you get here AC square DE square which is same as here AD and similarly if you try to multiply ABDE into CDE so you get here ABC right and similarly if you try to multiply all the three independent interaction ACE into ABDE into CDE CDE then you get here BE so you can see here that there are one two three four five six seven seven interactions are getting confounded and out of these these seven three are chosen by S. Yes, which are independent contrasts and the remaining four they are obtained by the generalized interaction and one thing you have to notice here that if you try to change this uh, these independent contrasts then the defining contrast will automatically be changing for example in case if I try to choose another set of independent contrast contrast as ABCD ACDE and ABCDE then I can obtain the generalized interaction by pairwise multiplication say means you could choose any two uh, effects and multiply them and can you try to choose uh, all the interaction and multiply them so by multiplying multiplying the first and second second and third if first and third and first second and third we get here um, say here B E E B A C D etc uh, as an generalized interaction but uh, in this example what you have to observe is the following that here you are trying to confound the higher order interaction like as ACE, ABDE and CDE and here also you are getting BCD, AD, ABC, BE so at the most there are um, uh, uh, second order interactions are getting confounded but when you are trying to choose here A, B, C, D, A, C, D, E and A, B, C, D, E then you can see here that here this here B and E which are the main effects they are also getting confounded 
and this gives us a warning. You see, what is the meaning of confounding? The confounding means you will not be able to estimate these effects. So when you are trying to choose this uh, conf uh, the uh, defining contrast or the set of independent contrast so that you can uh, reduce the block size to your desired level but in that process you are uh, sacrificing the the higher order interaction but side by side some lower order interaction or even the main effects are also getting confounded so this is a point where you have to be extremely careful that this should not happen that uh, in order to get a block arrangement your important factors like as a main effect they are also getting uh, confounded right okay so So now, so after uh, having these rules, I can comprehend all the things in a single slide. That how are we going to get a confounding arrangement? So suppose we wish to have a confounding arrangement in two to the power of p blocks of a two n factorial experiment. Then in that case, the block size will become two to the power of here and minus p total number of interactions to be confounded will become 2 to the power of p minus 1 and uh, so this is essentially the number of elements in the set of defining contrast and how this has been obtained well, let me try to show you here uh, because if you see if p factor r could be confounded with the number of first order interaction which is the main effect uh, that is um, with p factor that is going to be EC1. For example, if you try to see uh, that um, when we try to take the 2Q factorial experiment, then there are three main factors, say say A, B, C, and then you have two factor interaction A, B, B, C, A, C, and you have three factor interaction A, B, C, and so on. So just on those lines, in case if we are confounding say P number of factors, then out of those p factors, the total number of first order interaction, which are the main effect also, uh, is p c one. The 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 total number of second order interaction with p factor will be p c two. Similarly, the third order interaction with the p factor will be p c three, and finally, the interaction with the p factor will be p c p. Well, the total number of factors which are getting confounded will be PC1 plus PC2 plus PC3 up to dot 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 up to here PCP and this uh, sum is nothing but your 2 raised to the power of here P minus 1 right and this is what I have written here right so now our objective is this that with these rules I would try to obtain the blocks in which the required or the desired interaction effects are getting confounded right so this i will try to uh, uh, show you in the next uh, uh, lecture so now in this uh, uh, lecture i try to give you the basic fundamental definitions uh, which are needed to obtain the arrangement of different treatments in different blocks one important uh, uh, point which you always have to keep in mind is that that first you have to decide that what is the block size which you want because the block size depends on the cost of experimentation the availability of uh, experimental material and so on once you have decided the block size then you have to decide for the the number of effects which are required to be confounded then out of those effects uh, uh, those number of effects you have to choose uh, you have to choose that which are the effects which have to be confounded now here you have to be very careful 
the question comes what are the the effects which you would like to confound so now in case if you try to see from the basic definition what are the uh, what are the confounded effects the non estimable effects are the confounded effects that means once you confound uh, uh, once you confound an effect this will remain no more estimable you cannot estimate it after that so you are essentially sacrificing it so obvious question come which effects you would like to sacrifice the question comes those effects which are difficult to interpret they can be sacrificed they will give us the minimum loss now the next question comes what are such effects now if you try to see in any factorial experiment you have main effects you have second order interaction three third order interaction and so on so we understand that uh, as uh, the order of the interaction become higher and higher the interpretation becomes more difficult so usually as a rule when we are trying to choose the effects to be confounded we try to choose the higher order interaction but when you are trying to do it you have to be extremely careful that it may not happen that in order to sacrifice the or confound the higher order interaction some main effects are also getting confounded why because main effects are quite important because they are straight forward to interpret so this is how we have to be careful while we try to find out the confounding arrangement so you try to have a quick revision of this concept and i will be back on the next lecture till then you take care of yourself stay safe and i will see you in the next lecture goodbye